Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while, right? Welcome to this new review brought to you by AMPNF. Today, I'm exclusively talking about uh, the Sigma 135mm f2 lens, which I have acquired quite some time ago, um, and I've been able to test it in um, the Canary Islands and multiple um, locations as well. So I'm going to be able to give a little insight on this uh, beast for astrophotography only. So I'm going to be talking about how sharp it is from corner to corner and also how easy it is to, um, to use. But most importantly of all, we'll see why this lens is such a great fit for astrophotography. Let's take a look. The Samyang 135mm f2 is a manual focus telephoto lens for full frame sensors only that has been primarily designed for portrait but also wildlife and nighttime. It has an exceptionally bright maximum aperture of f2, allowing a lot of light onto the sensor. It's available for a variety of mounts including Nikon, Canon, Sony, Pentax, Fujifilm and Samsung. It weighs about 800 grams and gives the impression that it's rather solid with a hard alloy metal coating. Note that the aperture ring is also manual and that the focusing distance is rather high, about a meter. This lens is overall exceptionally sharp from corner to corner, even wide open at f2.0. This photo has been taken at f2 with a tracker and exposed 15 seconds at ISO 6400 with an astromodified camera. Look at how sharp the image is and how absent the coma is. I've also used the Canon 135mm this summer for NLC photography and I can tell you that it doesn't come as close to the Samyang's sharpness at f2. Also the coma is worse on the Canon. There is definitely a light fall off from corner to corner though, but it's not as pronounced and you can easily correct it in post-process. At f2.8, there is a very slight improvement in sharpness, but it's really not noticeable. The lens has now reached its maximum sharpness from corner to corner, at least for astrophoto purposes. At this aperture, you also slightly reduce the vignette effect. Just look at how much detail you can get for this exposure time. You can already see why this is a great addition to your astro lens shelf. Here are some final image results. First, a time-lapse which shows you the extreme versatility and abilities of this lens, even for single pictures. Second off, a stacked picture revealing the tremendous details this piece of glass is able to capture. This amazing lens can be used for a variety of astro purposes. The most obvious one is still photography. At this focal length and thanks to its sharpness, you can either capture nice close-up single exposures of night phenomena like the moon, conjunctions of planets, noctilucent clouds or nacreous clouds, etc. But due to the long focal length, you can't expose for more than 4 or 5 seconds without getting star trail, so you might want to use it in addition with a sky tracker. In this manner, you can expose longer and get more details. From there, you can either do single exposures, but also stacked exposures and even panoramas, and you can get fantastic images like these ones. Not a lot of people thought about it, but you can also use it for medium format astro time lapse. Since the Samyang's F2 give tremendous results, exposing 5-6 seconds at high ISOs, 6400 or more if your camera performs well at night, you can get tremendous untracked sequences of the Milky Way, unveiling extraordinary details and colors. For more sharpness and even more details, you can use a tracker and let the shutter open longer, as seen in these sequences. In conclusion, I would highly recommend this tremendous lens uh, that I have right here in my hands uh, because of its sharpness, its high efficiency, and its versatility, but most of all, 
uh, its price. I think it's about 550 bucks around that price. So for that price, it's half the price, at least I think as the Canon uh, 135. Um, and you get better quality, at least at F2 and uh, less coma, less vignetting, a better quality shots. So it's definitely a lens that you want to add to your shelf. Um, I don't know how the Sigma 135 millimeters f1.8 uh, compares to this, and I will soon have the results and hopefully have the uh, occasion once to, to try it. So I'll let you know then. Although it's important for me to remind you that it's not necessarily only the lens that produces the best results. It's actually the combination of the best skills, techniques, and gear. So best lenses, best cameras, but also the addition of a tracker, then light pollution filters, uh, astro modification, and all sorts of techniques to improve uh, the signal to noise ratio, so to better your photos. So keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching this new review today. And uh, if you have questions, please ask them in the comments below. Uh, I will gladly provide answers and I will gladly provide the raw files so you can download them and you can see for yourselves. In the meantime, don't hesitate to like, share and uh, subscribe to my channel if you like more videos, uh, more tutorials and more reviews on lenses for astrophotography. Thank you so much for watching. Till then, bye bye. Take care.